Actually, what wouldn't be mind is like a little calendar feature, just so I know how many days have passed. It's three days since Watanagashi. Watanagashi is on a Sunday, so this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. So, interesting. If Watanagashi was on a Friday. Well, on a Sunday, which I think it is because they said next holiday or break, it's a... Uh, it's Watanagashi. And it seems like whenever Sunday is, that's when they said it's break. Because I think they only get, like, one day off from school. Like, it's a way harder school life than us American children have it. Which sucks for them, I guess. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't know. I just wouldn't mind having the clock. Time of day, though. Just those little extra stuff that really don't matter at all. Where would they have gone at a time like that by themselves without eating? That's obvious, obviously where this is leading. I swear to fucking god. Keichikun, do you remember? On their fold-out table, there were things like soy sauce and a chopstick holder. Yeah, but I'm too much of a dumbass to pay attention to anything even minor. I look at the stupid stuff in life. There might have been something like... Might have been something like that. I didn't remember. See, you're a complete dumbass and useless. Why are you here? That container for the soy sauce. It was empty. Fuck you. That sucks. There wasn't even a drop left. Jeez. Good to the last fucking drop, I guess. Wow. Chill tofu wouldn't taste good without it. Sure, I've never had tofu, and I, pro I probably will never have it. It just does not look appealing to me. I would rather want physical meat, just uh, because it tastes so much better. I mean, come on, meat tastes so good. So I looked under their sink for the larger bottle of soy sauce they had. They- What the fuck? How do you know everything about their life? What the fuck? You sure know a lot about where they keep stuff. I've been to Rika's house and cooked it for them before. Oh, that makes sense. Sorry, I judged you. It's still kind of creepy, though, that you remembered everything. Rena cleared her throat, her face returning to a serious expression. Then when I opened the cabinet, the big bottle of soy sauce wasn't even there at all. It wasn't there? What do you mean by that? Everything I'm trying- I'm going to say from here on is just Rena's idea. Okay, so take it with a grain of fucking salt, is what you're saying. So please listen until the end without saying anything. Oh, I will interject my own personal monologue. Because I like to think I'm Keiichi's smart side. That apparently his emotional and stupid side decides to, you know, shut down from time to time. Because I'm the one that tries to keep us both alive. Because without me, he's fucked. Without him, I'm fucked. So really, it's a lose-lose for me. Last night. Satsuko was making dinner like normal. God, I, this doesn't really uh, make sense without the uh, Danganronpa climax interface music playing. When it's all been figured out. Because it just seems, it just seems like this style is what's about to be played out. Rika usually watched TV until the food was ready, so she was probably lying down watching a variety show or something. Satsuko put the tofu in the miso soup, and right when dinner was about to be ready, she noticed that they were all out of soy sauce. So Rika, who had nothing to do, brought the big bottle of soy sauce to a neighbor's house to borrow theirs. So we just go to the neighbors and fuck their day up. I don't really know my neighbors that well. Would you be willing to just give her soy sauce? It's a child! Of course I would be! Yeah. It's not all that uncommon in Hinamizawa. It's a child! Of course I would give him soy sauce. So Rika rode her bike out to get some soy sauce. No matter how long Satoko waited though, Rika didn't come back. Oh shit. So then Satsuko called up the house where Rika was going. Would Rika happen to be imposing on you? 
Something like that. Then the other person must have replied with something like this. We have plenty of food here. You should come too, Satoko. Rika has already eaten. I think that's how they called her out here, out there. I just had, I just had to, I had to do the just ominous like, fuck you guy. If I hear someone talking about that about Rika, fuck you. Nope. Satoko called Rika a few names in private and wrapped up the dinner she made, she had made for them. She put it in the fridge so she could use it for breakfast and lunch the next day. And Satoko got on her bike too, and headed for the house where Rika was. Watch the house. It's you! Come on, it's really, it, that really lacked the Donkong Rumpa music. Oh my god, had that played I would have lost my shit. That would have been the funniest thing, imperfectly spitting, I might add. I mean, that would have been the funniest shit in the world. Okay, but this really is, this is already pretty strange. You don't normally make so, so much food that you can give to people who suddenly arrive at your house. A veteran housewife would never normally make so much food that she could feed two extra people. They're children! They eat the same amount as a one adult. Could it have just been coincidence that they made too much? It's still unthinkable. Rena flatly denied me. Since Rika knew that Satoko had worked really hard to make dinner for them, she didn't she? No matter what kind of food she was offered, she wouldn't let Satoko's dinner go to waste. This was all only circumstantial evidence in Rena's guesswork. Even so, it was all extremely convincing. It was only the only ray of hope we had to topple this situation, but uh, bereft of clues. Then Rena, where did Rika go to get soy sauce? That's the million dollar question. That was the heart of it. It would have to be somewhere she'd be comfortable with asking for soy sauce. And somewhere Satoko wouldn't think it suspicious that she'd be invited for dinner. So who was it? Rena slowly shook her head. Don't say it. That's all for Rena's guesses. These are all just ideas, okay? Keep them a secret from the police. What is there to hide? Even if only half of what you say is right, it should be a good, uh, good clue for all of this. God, I don't... I'm already going straight to the worst possible idea. That's why... Uh, just in my head, I'm just thinking, like, don't say it. Don't fucking say it. Don't say it. Oh, God. I just... I don't even want to entertain the possible idea of Shion or Mion being involved with this. Oh, I don't care about Shion being involved. Fuck her. I don't want Mion being involved with this. It's just going constantly through my head, and it's just making me nervous as hell. It's making me worry. I don't like worrying. Oh god, please don't make it be her. Please tell me it's just some random ass house. Please. What's there to hide? Yeah, we already did that. What's there to hide? It's not a, it's a clue, it needs to be said, blah blah blah. Okay, kun didn't you remember Oishi? Oh my good god, Oishi still could have done it. Satoko wouldn't think it's strange that Rika went to the police for some soy sauce. God, I can't even fucking say that with a straight face. I just, I'm just down here at this police station. Wanna come have dinner? This all means uh, suspecting someone from Hinomizawa. We can't suspect anyone without a real good, really, a really good reason. Hmm. God, I don't want it to be true. I'll flat out deny it, though. I will come out with a million reasons why it physically can't be there. I saw a few girls coming over to rinse out their bento boxes. Fuck off! Just push one of them on the ground. Rena cut the conversation short there and returned to the classroom. I stayed there alone, my body bathed in the lively voices of the cicadas. Let's think about this. In my own way. Rena had barely any information to go on, and yet she'd resumed out that re reasoned out that much. 
So there should be something that only I, who knew far more than Rena did, could de uh, deduce. Deduce. Oishi said last night too, that this incident was definitely occur definitely occurring within Hinomizawa. Rena might not have wanted to believe it, but it's basically a given that the culprit is someone from the village. The trigger for everything was when the four of us trespassed in the fo forbidden for oh God. forbidden storehouse. If not my fucking fault. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to stay and watch the goddamn performance. And possibly sit with Mion as well. And you know, stand with her. Be nice with her. You know, all the good stuff that really nothing bad can come up from that. But instead, dumb fuck Keiichi wants to be like, Oh, what's the worst that can happen in here? Oh god, there's a bunch of torture stuff in here. Why am I here again? Oh yeah, because I'm a dumbass. Thus, that's why I keep saying Keiichi deserves everything that happens to him. I don't care how bad it is, he deserves it. As long as they leave Mion alone, I don't care what happens. Leave her alone. Fuck the rest of the world. Somebody saw us going in there. For the culprits breaking the taboo was a crime punish punishable by death. Which I'm glad I just got convinced by saying, It's interesting. It'll be cool in there. So that night, Tomitake and Takano were sacrificed. They deserved it. There were two left. Shion and myself. She can fucking die. I don't give a right to ask about her. Can I just sacrifice her life for mine? I don't want to. I, I want to live. I want to have a long life with Mion. Fuck Shion. I don't give a shit. Fuck that bitch. However, before the culprits bore their fangs on Shion and I, they went after the mayor to whom Shion had confessed her sin. Next, they went for Rika, to whom I had confessed my sin. Then what about Satoko? Just a stray bullet? Well, if you go by what me own slash she own slash alter me own said, still not convinced it's regular me own. Never will be. Uh, apparently she's fucking cursed. By itself, Rika being sacrificed after I told her everything was mortifying. But Satoko, who was sacrificed for no reason, wasn't that all, all the more regrettable. Everything was my fault. Hey, except the mayor. That's not your fault. Who would be the next to disappear? Who would it be Shion and me next? Why? Why aren't the culprits going for Shion and me right away? If they had enough power to erase the mayor and Rika, then why not just get rid of Shion and I? Yeah, I'm replacing me and I. Shion and me? No, Shion and I. Sounds better. If they went for us, well, I wouldn't like it, but I could still tolerate it. <laughs> I mean, what's the worst they can do to me? I mean, they could probably break every bone in my body, but it would be fine. What I couldn't forgive was them getting rid of those who we'd confessed to. Now that I think of it, yesterday she said something alarming. She felt like someone was watching her. Oh yeah, guess what? Fuck you. I don't have that feeling. So then, was somebody watching me as well? Don't get fucking paranoid because she's bringing up paranoia. You know what's it? Oh, you know what I think it could be? Another side tangent. Last game, Keiichi was feeling really paranoid. Like someone was watching him. I think it's the same thing. Whatever was affecting Keiichi is affecting Shio now. So she's like ultra fucking paranoid and going to go crazy. Like kill a bunch of people and then fucking kill herself. I think that's what it's going to be. Like clawing out her throat. Which would, oh, that would be gross. But oddly satisfying. Because it wouldn't be me dying. I hadn't felt anything like that until now. Even though I'm the root cause of everything, I have never once had that impression. Maybe that was simply because Shion was more cautious than me. And I was just being careless. Well, well, the second part of that statement's definitely true. The first part, I doubt that. That's another story, though. Let's get back on track. They weren't the culprits going after Shion and me, I. I felt like there is... That's where the key to this lie. Lay. Lie. Lay. Lie. Whatever. 
Could it be... was I making a big assumption that I shouldn't have been? I thought and thought, but couldn't come up with an answer. The one thing I understood was that I was a concerned party to this case, and I had a duty to watch over it until everything got resolved. Hey, lunch is over. Can I just have my me own back? Then everything will be all hunky-dory, everything will go back to normal. Because I just, I miss her. Already. I heard the bell of the... I heard the ring of the bell, declaring the end of the lunch break. Would everybody else disappear tonight? Somebody else. If nobody else did, then I wanted them to get rid of me tonight, for sure. Why? Why would you say that? And then put an end to all of this. Shion's hysterical voice on the phone last night came back to my mind. They plan to murder those close to us first, make us as miserable as possible, and only then would they kill us. Mayabara, lunch break is over. Go back to class. At the principal's urging, I returned to the classroom, which was quiet as the streets at night. Can Mion be there? Nope, nope, class over. What a boring ass day. There were a lot of parents picking up their children after school. It was just like a kindergarten. Uh, to be fair, I'd rather want my, uh, I'd rather want to bang, make sure my child is safe. And vice versa, I'd love it if my parents cared if I were safe. The students whose parents didn't come went home as a group. We left school with everyone else following the assigned route. Even while leaving, nobody said anything funny. They all looked like exhausted mountaineers silently marching through the mountains. Man, fuck school, fuck the rules, I just walk off the side of the road. Fuck you guys. As we went, one left and then another, and in the end it was just Rena and me. I was supposed to escort Rena all the way to her house, but she declined. Thank God, because I didn't want to. Cause that's a little bit ridiculous. She can handle herself. Will you be alright? It's not safe to go alone. Here, take this. It would be just as dangerous for you to go home by yourself after bringing me back, Keiichi Kun. She has a fucking real point. It's still light out anyway. I'll be fine. Oh, fucking rip. Rip. Rip, Rena. She's not making it back. Again? We're still at the neutral state. Maybe a little lost just because everyone's fucking disappearing at this point. But still fine. <laughs> but yeah, she's fucked now. Oh, that's your... That's just an automatic in any game. Just saying, I'll be fine. That's just an automatic, you're fucked. I would just look at her and say, You really did not just fucking say that, did you? I see. Then be careful, okay? Yeah. Huh? Isn't that a policeman? Fuck! Go away, Oishi. Please. Please don't make me talk to him. Rena pointed towards my house. I proceeded to pull out a 50 caliber, uh, just a fucking, you know, crazy ass machine gun, lit up into his car and say, get the fuck out of here. I was gonna say a Barrett 50 caliber sniper rifle, blow out both of his fucking legs. At that point, it would probably blow off his legs and just say, fuck you. Pierce's gas tank. An engine block. Fuck you, old man. You ain't going all anywhere, bitch. Then curb stomp his ass. Just to make sure. I swear to fucking god, if he's kidnapped me, oh no. Oh, I'll be pissed. There was a car stopped in front of it. From out of the car came Moishi. Hey, Ren, I'm coming to your house now. He must have been waiting for my return to ambush me. I don't have to answer a goddamn question, though. Fuck him. I know my fucking rights. You can't arrest me, bitch. What are you gonna charge? Rena, you should go. If you get involved with him, you'll be here for hours. But... What do the police want with you? With you? Rena's a good person. Even when I made a fuss over Rika's disappearance, she never asked me why I did. She could have been suspecting me either ever since then, and that would have been okay. 
Even so, she still hadn't asked me anything. She didn't try and pressure me into revealing the truth. I'm not the culprit. I know that. That said, I can't say that I'm totally uninvolved with this incident. Rena simply listened, smiling like she always did. You know the fact that Gaichi's uh, telling her stuff? She's gonna die. Fuck her. Even though I had insinuated I was related to the incident, she didn't look at me as though she were looking at something dirty. I'll tell you next time. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Get going, then. Rena gave a slight bow and trotted away. Leaving me alone with Oishi who walked over. Fuck off. Actually, what I would do, keep walking. Walk right past the fucker. Fuck his ass. I don't give a shit. Hello, hello. Welcome home, Mayavara. Hello. Looks like your parents aren't here. My, my, was I in a, in a bit of a spot? You came all the way to my house. I could only thank my good fortune that my parents were absent. Since neither of them were around at this hour, they would probably be back late. I think Dad got called out- Why are you telling him this? I think Dad got called out on business. I don't think he'll be back until later. I see. Many of time to work you over. And he fucking turns me around to arrest me. Now it's time to be abducted, little boy. Well, that's convenient, I suppose. We can do this without giving your parents any strange ideas. Fuck off. I don't give a fucking shit what you think, you piece of old fucking piece of shit. Go die in a fucking hole. Honestly, I want you to be cursed. Fuck you. I want you to be tortured. Fuck your ass. I would tell you everything. And then say, oh, completely forgot. Anyone who I've told so far about this curse thingy that's what I did, they've all been abducted. Strange a little coincidence, isn't there? And then just watch him fucking start panicking. And then just start laughing. Hysterically. And then walk into my house, lock the door, and say, Have fun tonight, old man. Oishi pushed my back, prompting me to walk. I wouldn't walk then. Fuck you. Seemed like you wanted me to get in the car. Don't do it. Don't. Are you taking me to the police station? I wasn't the culprit, but I was uh, the cause of the everything. It wouldn't be weird if you wanted to investigate me. That kind of gave me a resigned feeling. No, no, I just don't want to stand around talking. We can just talk in the car, that's all. No, that's stupid as hell. Come now, don't be shy. He opened the back door, urged me inside. No! No! Keiichi! Keiichi, if your parents told you not to get in strangers' cars, you shouldn't do it. If I got in, I wouldn't have a very t easy time getting out. If I said no, however, then this man might really handcuff me and take me away. For what? I couldn't refuse. I could only accept in good grace. The fuck? What's he gonna arrest you on? Like, fuck you, old man. I'm not answering your fucking questions. I can- I'll talk to you next time I get a fucking attorney. Because I ain't answering anything until you prove to me why I need to answer something. Bitch. You're a dumbass. You obviously don't care about your life. Inside the car, it had been cooled too much by the air conditioner, and there was a rusty smell coming from the filter, which must have been cleaned only rarely. Oh, is it too cold? Too bad. Fuck you, I'm old. I'll turn the car off. Uh, then I would, I would instantly ask, give me the keys so I know you're not going to drive off and fucking abduct, abduct me. Though also, I would grab his keys, open the door, throw them as far as I could. Actually, no, take the car key off of it, throw the keychain so he thinks the keys are that way, then just pocket the car key, walk into my house, lock the door. And then just start laughing hysterically. Because it's not like he can break open my fucking door. You need a search warrant, bitch. Quack, 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 quack. Oh yeah, I didn't actually read that part. 
He turned off the engine and suddenly being quiet, became quiet, and the voices of the Higurashi with all their cool loneliness snuck inside. Sounded to me like a chorus of voices lamenting my exorbitant punishment for having harbored such foolish curiosity. You deserve everything. For a few moments while listening to those voices, I myself lamented the days that had been twisted and distorted since that night. Oichi, as if uh, waiting for me to voluntarily begin, taking lit, lit a si talking, lit a cigarette, and listened to the Higurashi. The silence became deafening, and I was the one who folded first. I was the investigate. Oh, I would just say, why am I here? Just straight, straight to the point. Why am I here? How's the investigation going? The investigation of what? Fuck you. There have been so many. Which do you mean? Oh, oh. Fuck off. I fucking hate this bastard. All of them. Well, all right then. Their officially secret investigations were under a media blackout, but I'll let you in on them. Then shall we start from the first incidents? Oh my good god, no. Keiichi, why did- oh God, I fucking hate you. I hate you, Keiichi. I really do. I really do. I would have just asked, why am I here? And if there's not a meaningful purpose of why I'm here, I'm leaving. And don't fucking come near me. See what I would do? Talk to me own and get congressmen to say fuck Oishi. No cops are allowed near me. See, this is another privilege of being with the Sonozaki family. You can just say go fuck yourself. And guess what? They'll go fuck themselves and they won't come near you. But that's smart. The freak deaths of Tomitake and Takano on the night of the Watanagashi. On this one, embarrassingly enough, we haven't made any progress at all. First of all, Tomitake, there are indications of it on his body that he was assaulted by a group of people, but we have no explanation for him clawing out his own throat and dying. We suspect an overdose from a stimulant or something, but we didn't detect anything. What about Takano? The same, we're in the dark. Autopsies for those who are burned to death are real tough. We believe she was doused in gasoline after she was strangled. Oh, the bitch fucking deserved that one. Oh, that's good. Oh, I would have tortured her more, though. Oh, more. So, so much more. Multiple stab wounds, gouging out her eyes. Pouring the gasoline in, like, her gouged out eye holes, lighting those on fire first, then the rest of her body. Oh, I would have fun fucking with her. In, like, a morbid sense. Not, like, actually wanting to have sex with her. Because she's a bitch. I mean, I'd, she is a complete bitch. And manipulative as hell. Fuck her. She needs to get... She needs to die some more. Honestly. That one falls under the Gifu Pre Prefectural Police Department. They haven't been very cooperative, even though it happened in our territory. Oh, that's not really relevant, though. Oh, oh. So the police didn't know anything other than the fact that the victims died inexplicably. Nonetheless, the times when the incidences occurred have been generally placed right after the festival ended. It's a bit uncertain in Takano's case, but the likely prospect is that she was murdered at the same time as Tomitake, then dumped in the mountains of Gifu. Why would they bring a dead body all the way to the mountains? They should have just brought Tomitake out there too. Oh my, Mayabara, you're quite sharp, you know that? No he's not, he's a fucking dumbass. Don't call him sharp. 